the Shelf with Christine and Katie, where we share with you our book recommendations to help you find your next read or to build your, your TBR for, list for the future. So as you might notice, we're in a different location. Unfortunately, the room we normally record in is under renovation, but please enjoy our lovely outdoor scenery <laughs> for this month. Okay, this month, it's Women's History Month. And the Women's History Alliance theme this year is Women Who Advocate for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. So we thought, what would be better than historical fiction books about women from around the world? We hope you enjoy these titles and maybe even find a few favorites of your, of your own or two. And as always, if you have any recommend, put them in the comments. Mm -hmm. And as always, so settle in, grab a cup of your favorite beverage, and enjoy these recommendations. And as always, let us know in the comments what you think of these pics and hand tiles to add. Go ahead and join there. Yeah, yeah. And as always, if you wish to be uh, notified of new videos, be sure to like and subscribe below. But as always, let's get to those books. Get to those books. You want to start us off, Katie? Sure. So our first recommendation is Lady Tan's Circle of Women by Lisa C. And this novel is inspired by the true story of Tan Yuxin, a woman born into an elite class in China during the 15th century who became a doctor of women and girls. Mm -hmm. uh, her story of class restrictions and expectations, of learning medicine from her grandmother, of life, death, and friendship, and the yin and yang of life. Sounds very interesting. Yeah. I, think I think we've we, recommended this one before. We, I, we recommended <laughs> when it was coming out, but now I've been hearing such great press about yeah. it. And she's Surprise a wonderful you read author. It. it seems like your thing. Not yet, but <laughs> it's on my TV. <laughs> Our infinite TBR. <laughs> Next up we have The Women by Christian Hanna. When Frances Frankie, McGrath's brother, ships out to serve in Vietnam, she joins the Army Nurse Corps and follows his path when she hears that women can be heroes too. Frankie's overwhelmed by the chaos and destruction of war, the real challenge comes when she arrives back home mm. to a changed and politically divided America. It must be rough. Yeah. All right, and the next one we're going to recommend is called A Long Petal of the Sea by Isabel Allende. And this novel follows two refugees from the Spanish Civil War, a pregnant young widow, and an army doctor who is her deceased love's brother. Mm -hmm. In order to achieve a passage to Chile on the Winnipeg, uh, they enter a mock marriage, which is the last thing either of them want. Mm -hmm. Inspired by the stories of real refugees, passengers on the Winnipeg. Nice. Then we have The First Ladies by Marie Benedict and Victoria Christopher Murray. Now, this book is based on the real friendship between First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt and educator and civil rights activist Mary McCloy Bethune. The book is told from the perspective of both the characters, so you have a little bit of back and forth, and it stretches from 1927 to 1945. So I think you probably get a pretty interesting view of what was going on, yeah. not just in America, but in the world. I also like the dual perspectives in novels. Yeah, so I always think that's nice. Really kind of nice. Okay, and the next one I'm going to recommend is called The Briar Club by Kate Quinn. And it's coming out in July of this year, and this book has been described as a haunting and powerful story of female friendships and secrets in a Washington, D.C. boarding house during the McCarthy era that captures the paranoia of the time and the changing worlds for women in post-war America. Mm -hmm. I feel like anything in the McCarthy era is immediately interesting. Yes. Now we have The Phoenix Crown by Kate Quinn and Janine Chen. Now, this novel takes the reader from California's 1906 earthquake to the halls of Versailles. Very different perspectives oh, there. Oh, yes. So we have the singer Gemma and embroideress Suling are both drawn to railroad magnate Henry Thornton, hmm. whose extraordinary collection of Chinese antiquities includes the fabled Phoenix Crown, which is a legendary relic of Beijing's fallen summer palace. When Thornton vanishes, the women think that the Phoenix Crown is gone and lost forever. Hmm until it reappears <laughs> in Paris five years later. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, that's interesting. I'm, you know, now I definitely want to find out more about the Phoenix Crown. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the next one we're going to recommend is called The Other Princess, a novel of Queen Victoria's goddaughter by Denny S. Bryce. And this is after, uh, after West African princess, uh, Sarah Forbes Bonetta is kidnapped from her home and sold into enslavement. She's ultimately rescued and given as a gift to Queen Victoria. <laughs> I hear the lovely time. Yes. Uh, she is raised in Queen Victoria's court and must learn to adapt to life in Victorian England. Based on the real life story of a recently rediscovered historical figure. I'm kind of curious about this book because mm -hmm. I like the whole story of yeah, the royals and their telling. historical mm -hmm. um, perspectives, and I've never heard of this person. I haven't heard either, so curious it's definitely to going find on. out more. It's definitely going on my list now. <laughs> 
Then we have The Lost Journals of Sacagawea by Deborah Magpie Erling. This is written by indigenous author Deborah Magpie Erling, and this novel offers new perspectives on what is known and debated about the life of Sacagawea, including her age, her marriage to a French fur trader, and her experience as the only woman traveling on the 1804 to 1806 Corps of Discovery expedition with Meriwether Lewis and William Clark. Sure, you don't know much about her. No. And the next one we're going to recommend is Bessie by Linda Cass. And this book tells the tale from Bessie Meyer since adolescence through her year-long reign as Miss America in 1945. Mm -hmm. Bess is distinct because she was the first and only Jewish woman to win the crown. Mm -hmm. She was the first college graduate to win and was the first winner as Miss America transitioned from a beauty to scholarship pageant. Okay, so then we have the final installment of a series that I really like. This is The Perfumist of Paris by Alka Yoshi. It is the final chapter of her New York Times best-selling Jeff Horror tr trilogy that it takes readers to 1970s Paris where Arada's budding career as a perfumer must compete with the demands of her family and the secrets of her past. For those of you who don't know, um, I really loved The Henna Artist, which mm -hmm. was the first book in this series, and I'm very much looking forward to reading the conclusion. So, read the first two, come back for this <laughs> one. <laughs> and the next one we're going to recommend is called The Woman with the Cure by Lady Cullen. In 1940s and 50s America, polio is as threaded as the atomic bomb. Uh, no one's life is untouched by this disease that kills or paralyzes its victims, particularly children. Yeesh. Mm -hmm. Dorothy Horston is not focused on beating her colleagues to the vaccine. She just wants the world to have a cure. And it's based on the true life story of the woman who stopped a pandemic. Yeah, this is another one of those mm -hmm. um, female scientists behind the men who actually get yeah, the credit. I know. Um, I think Marie Benedict writes up quite a few of those. Oh, no, she does. <laughs> You're right. So next up we have A Grandmother Begins the Story by Michelle Porter. And this book weaves together past and present through the entwined stories of five generations of Matisse women, the bison that are so important to their people and the land around them. It's from a young mother struggling to connect with her newly discovered heritage to the ancestors whose work is not finished even in the afterlife. These women's stories connect and inf influence each other. So we have yet another indigenous American story. It sounds so interesting, interesting though. Nice. Yeah. Okay, and one we've mentioned before, but is really good. Uh, it's The Only Woman in the Room by Marie Benedict, who you might have heard us mention before. Yes. <laughs> and it's based in the accomplished life of Hedy Lamarr, uh, born Hedwig Keisler, the, Hollow, uh, the Hollywood screen star for the 1940s and 50s who escaped her Nazi-affiliated husband to arrive in Hollywood, where she launched the acting career for which she's well known yes. today. Uh, however, less known is the invention she created with George Anthel that eventually led to the creation of Bluetooth and what we now know as Wi-Fi. Yeah, fascinating. Which, I had no idea she did it when we read the book for our book club. Yeah. We had, I had no idea. I think you knew, but I had no idea. Very little, but yeah, it was very interesting to find out how involved she really was with that it, yeah. the invention that led to. And honestly, even how difficult it was for her to get it patented. It's such an interesting yes, story. Yes, and to use it. Uh, yes. the, the, government, the defense government didn't even want to... Um, entertain the idea yes. of using something and imagine a life, woman, but we don't right. want to give away too much more. No, no. Okay. <laughs> but imagine a life today without Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. <laughs> sure. All right. Next up we have Queen Hair Actor by Isabel Schuler. Rock, daughter of a deposited king and descendant of ancient druids in medieval Scotland, believes that it is her destiny to become queen and reclaim her people's ancient lands. This book is inspired from real medieval history and from Shakespeare's famous tragedy. This is the story of the real woman who inspired his Lady Macbeth. <laughs> I, I love it when you said his famous tragedy. I'm like, they're all tragedies in some way. <laughs> uh, he has comedies too. Oh yes, true. There you go. And the next one we're going to recommend is called The House on Sun Street by Mohegan Gazarad. From a young girl's perspective on Sun Street, readers um, experience a 1979 Iran revolution through the eyes of Moji and her family members during a time of political and social change. She must endure the harrowing um, first days of the violent revolution, passage to the U.S. where there is only hostility from her classmates during the Iran hostage crisis. That's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Her family's detainment by the Islamic Revolutionary Army. And finally, the massive change in the status of women in post-revolution Iran. Man, she already seemed like she had quite a life there. So much went on in like that one person's life, and this is very typical of many people mm -hmm. within that time frame. So it would be nice to read a little bit more on there. Exactly. And finally, we have it's a series, the Seven Sisters series by Lucinda Riley. 
Now this series follows the story of seven sisters, and it begins as their adoptive father, the elusive billionaire they call Pa Saul, Hilarious dies. <laughs> he dies, and they are given a tantalizing clue to their true heritage. Each book focuses on a different sister and it covers history from around the world. I myself have just finished reading the first book, mm -hmm. and in it we were transported to Rio de Janeiro and Paris during the construction of the Christ the Redeemer statue while Maya, the first sister, discovers her family history. Um, I learned some very interesting tidbits about how uh, France kind of helped with the construction of the statue and how it was made. Yes. Um, I'm just started in on the second series, and we're in Nor Norway during um, the Rise of Isbin. Uh, play right, and I will say, I just started. I am on the fourth chapter, but I'm already in love with it. Yes. Sometimes the books tend to start off a little slow, but once mm -hmm. they get into it, it they get going quick. They so go quick. give it a give it a chance. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this series <laughs> myself. Yes. Same. All right. So that's all we have. But there are so many more great books out there. We hope you've enjoyed these picks. And you know, like I said before, let us know if there's any great historical fiction. Um, about women or otherwise that you've yes. read at, in, in the Enjoy. comments below. See you next time. Until then, though, happy reading. Take care. Take care.